Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we're going to touch on an issue that I've talked about, I've done a little bit of research on, and of course, that is the issue of squatting, and specifically, we're going to talk about a $10 million listed mansion that has essentially been destroyed by people squatting in it because the state of California is in complete and utter disarray. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticeword.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Our call to a multi-million dollar Hollywood Hills estate after neighbors hear screams coming from inside the lavish home, fearing someone inside was being hurt. But what they found instead was a group of squatters. Now on this channel, multiple times, I've talked about the fact that the you voted for this kind of thing when somebody's victimized by criminality is a terrible strategic talking point. It's actually quite immoral in a lot of ways, and it's something that people on the right who are trying to actually win on the issue of criminal justice should likely avoid doing because when somebody comes toward your position, slapping them in the face is not usually a good response in order to win them over. That ultimately ends up leading to them retreating to their side because your side is so mean and you're not sympathetic to their issues. And in reality, in actuality, I am sympathetic for the victims of criminality. That being said, in this specific circumstance, where we're not talking about people who just voted for the left-wingers in the state of California, we're talking about the wealthy elite of the state of California, they donated for this. These are the kind of people who supported defunding the police more than any other group. If you remember, there was a survey way back when, and it showed us that black Americans, something like 81% of them wanted police funding kept the same or increased due to the crime that they experienced in their neighborhoods. And the only group in this country that actually supported cutting the funding of the police were people with high net worths, people who made over $100,000 a year. So in this specific scenario we're talking about people who live in places like this now i'm still sympathetic to them i still want them to course correct turn things around i think it's an embarrassment on our country that states like california don't incarcerate people at all even though they keep repeat offending as long as they're labeled a so-called non-violent offender but to be clear and this is from me to all of you I do grant that likely these people not only voted for this, but a lot of them donated for this. KTLA's Rick Chambers is live in West Hollywood with a closer look at the problem. Rick. Also, Jenks' nephew lives in West Hollywood, so Jenks' nephew might be one of the neighbors that has to deal with this. Also, he might say he supports this ideology because they put F rich people as they're trashing this property. It was a call of a woman screaming that brought police to this hillside mansion on Sunset Plaza. And these three people were removed from it and handcuffed. It's an abandoned house. Um, they're just trespassing, squatting. Uh, the screaming was somebody, I think they got bit by a dog. So first and foremost, I want to say that it does look quite nice to see these people, these people who are acting criminally, being arrested by the police. And apparently, according to the officer that is on the scene that's talking to the press, the screaming might have been due to the fact that a dog is involved in the situation and that woman might have been bitten by a dog. Because, of course, if you're going to go into a place, trash it, do graffiti all over it, try to steal it from somebody, you might as well bring your rabid dog into the situation so everybody can get rabies and eventually the rabies virus can mutate and we can have some type of zombie outbreak. The man and the two women were cited for trespassing passing and then released two of them telling us it was just a misunderstanding and just as i said i was happy to see that these people were in fact arrested for their crime it turns out that they were immediately released on the scene because what's the point of even holding them in the state of california maybe they had priors let's be honest likely that have priors but you know what in reality in actuality i'm sure the strategy of catching somebody handcuffing them for a little bit then giving them a ticket which by the way if you don't pay the ticket it's not like they can put you in jail in the state of california because they have that law that bars non-violent people from entering prisons so people get shifted to the county jails the county jails are overcrowded and if you had to choose between a trespasser and a burglar chances are you're not going to hold the trespasser over the regular burglar. But then again, we actually did a story about how somebody was convicted of 77 felony counts of burglary 
and they released that guy too. So who knows what the hell is going on in the state of California, but I'm very happy to see that these innocent angel Aladdins who are just trying to feed their starving family by bringing their rabid dog into this house and trashing it were released onto the streets and were so, so sympathetic to them because, wow, ima imagine, imagine if you were so desperate you had to rip apart a $10 million house in order to survive. I mean, wh wh what would you even do if you needed a place to stay? I mean, would you stay there and not trash the place? No, absolutely not. Obviously, the more you trash it, the more you graffiti it, that just means you're more desperate and more deserving of soft treatment. But I was hired to clean up. I take this waters out, get the house ready to prepare for lease or for sale. Why are you lying? Come on, come on. Who are you fooling? You were hired, you, this blonde lady, were hired to go into this home and get the squatters out and then you were just arrested by the evil white racist cops that are evil white and racist but also Hispanic because it's California because they didn't want you to do your job of clearing out the squatters who by the way were not there because you were the squatters and for some reason we're supposed to believe that and you got bit by a dog maybe maybe it was you maybe it was somebody else and you were screaming but sure you were hired to clear out this 10 million dollar estate because you know that you're the you're the exact right woman for the job you don't know this but that's actually the original black canary not the one from suicide squad that attractive one this this is the old black canary the the mother of black canary she didn't die she actually ended up taking a job abandoning her daughter into that movie birds of prey and coming out here in order to deal with the riffraff in the 10 million dollar estate in california you better watch out because when she does that sonic scream it is over over for you squatters this lady is definitely a superhero look at her black canary mask i was delivering ice and water to okay. these guys here and um and they said the coffee comes in. So what? Um, I was looking for my keys, my car keys here in this. Listen, I have to tell you guys something, and I want you to really understand this before I explain to you what I hate about what this guy just said. So first and foremost. I have sympathy for drug addicts. I do feel bad for these people. I do feel like they are sick. I do feel like they are in need of help. I also am making an assumption that this person right here is likely a drug addict and likely not the ice delivery person. I would love to see some of this ice that he was delivering to Black Canary in order to help her clear out the home of the squatters that are all suspiciously absent, but trust us, they work for them. But the thing that I don't like about drug addicts, and this is something that you understand when you actually have to interact with them, when they're actually members of your family, is the fact that they always have 27 million excuses for everything. So this guy right here said that he was the ice delivery guy. Where's the ice? Who the hell knows? He says he was delivering it to the house for some reason because I guess they don't have an ice maker. It's just something that he, he had to do. Maybe the ice melted away. I was delivering ice and water to okay. these guys here and um and they said the cops are coming so what? Um I was looking for my keys, my car keys here in this and then he says the police were called and then he jumps to another excuse where he forgot his keys inside the house because you know when you're delivering ice into a home you drop off your car keys in the ice tray person's car key dish and again this is just how addicts lie this is what they do and as somebody who's actually interacted with them in my personal life members of my family we're talking about when i see this on the news i have no tolerance for this i actually remember a content creator i won't name him if you guys know who he is then let me know down in the comments below who dated an older woman who was a drug addict and then he did a stream when he found out she was stealing from him about how surprised he was by all of her addict like behavior now i would have told him had i had the chance to have a one-on-one -on -one, that that's exactly what other people who have to interact with these people do and this is one of the reasons why a lot of people have a lot of disdain for them and this is one of the reasons why my feelings on this topic are quite complicated because I not only understand this from like an intellectual level where these people are sick the addiction is driving them to be terrible people to do horrible things but also you don't want to be around them you don't want these people in your family you don't want to deal with these people because they do things like this and this is just the lowest portion of the conversation the constant line the constant deception the constant making no sense and I know it seems like I'm rambling a lot about this specific guy and his specific two lies in 15 seconds but it really needs to be emphasized to all these idiots who don't have experience with these people that they are a problem and these are the kind of people you have to push into help he's not the ice delivery guy I would bet 
a hundred dollars that that is not the case because again who delivers ice to their abandoned destroyed household it makes no sense but the real estate agent told us off camera that none of these three should have been at the site now this is a home that once listed for more than 10 million dollars but is now covered in graffiti and littered with debris and feces and what used to be million dollar views are painted over now i have to be honest i was really hoping when i heard the list price of this home at 10 million dollars that this was in fact coco crisp the former major league baseball players home in california that he put on the market and had trouble selling after he ended up being traded i think he played for the dodgers at one point but i may have been the angels of anaheim but this is coco chris home this is what a 10 million dollar home in the state of California years ago looked like. And while I want it to be true that this was, in fact, the same home that Coco Chris, one of the best-named baseball players in the history of mankind, used to live in, I fear that the photos being completely different might actually be some evidence that it's not. But we could just pretend that they broke into Coco Chris' house and he couldn't sell it, and now it's turned over to the real estate company, and now they're stealing from a baseball player which is a baseball joke reference because you steal bases and they didn't cover their bases by securing this home. And I don't even know why I'm talking about this for this long. I'll probably cut everything I just said about Coco Chris house from the video. It's happening pretty often. And neighbors who don't want to show their faces are concerned with strangers coming and going at all hours and the crime that comes with it. How long have they been in there, do you think? These people, probably four or five days. Look, I don't want to criticize the local news. I don't want to bite the hand that feeds me because without them, I would not know about this story in order to bring it to you. However, and I do mean how and then ever, I do want to bite the hand that feeds me because this woman doesn't want to show her identity, but you plastered her address numbers. Clearly, you said it was in West Hollywood, and that is just a way for people to identify who this woman is or where she lives, and she's obviously scared of the crime in her area. So bad job by the local news in this regard. You, sir, have failed as a journalismer, and therefore I am calling you out for your bad tactics. This is a property that police have visited before during the past year, and it may take action by the city to finally get it cleaned up. Now that last part right there, I just wanted to leave in because I think it's absolutely crucial because a lot of you might be saying, you know what? Rich people home, I don't give a damn. It might be owned by a bank or whatever. They might be trying to sell it. Not my problem. But the thing is, once this becomes an issue where people have to be called over and over again in order to deal with the squatters, the partiers, the people trashing this home, once they destroy this building to the point where it becomes a safety hazard, you're sinking thousands upon thousands of dollars in police resources, as well as the city eventually having to step in in order to make repairs on this home because you're just letting it get completely out of hand. Also, it is a terrible sign that a wealthy neighborhood in California, typically or used to be isolated from this, is now being infected by the criminality that's plaguing the rest of the state. And this vandalism doesn't seem to be hurting the property values, though. There are still very large, elaborate homes that are building all throughout this canyon. And that last point by this guy is absolutely crucial. If you're in one of these other homes, you're not losing value. This is because the state of California constricts housing supply through a number of regulations, chief among them zoning regulations, and the Los Angeles area is very known for this practice. So the rich people in the area aren't even really bearing the consequences of this. It's being shifted to the taxpayer. It's being shifted to law enforcement. And because these problems can't be managed in a sensible way, because you can't arrest people and actually have serious consequences for or trespassing you're wasting resources going after the same people over and over and over again when you could get them off the streets and divert your focus to other things essentially everybody is suffering except for the rich people in this area although some of the people that are in the immediate area might have to deal with the consequences of the criminality. But the taxpayer suffering, the police officer suffering, the taxpayer who also has to deal with criminality, who is noticing that the officers are diverted to this site, also suffering. And one more crucial point, and this is the fact that the local news calls these kind of incidents squatting incidents because people show up in the homes and they occupy them as dwellings. But the thing is, the idea of squatters' rights comes from the idea that you, when you stop by a home, would actually maintain it, fix it up, 
plant some crops, grow the field, till the land, all of that. These people are doing nothing but destroying. They're not in line with the squatter's rights doctrine that has been established through English common law and throughout the United States of America. So even calling them squatters is giving them too much credit. They do not have the rights. They do not act in the noble way that people who discover property that they legitimately think is not owned by anyone actually act. And thus, they are not entitled to any of the protections or should not be entitled to any of the protections that somebody who lives legitimately improves the property would be entitled to it's an absolute disaster in every possible way in the state of california and once again we have another canary in the coal mine kind of incident for us to look at and understand how bad it's actually getting but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like the video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about the chaos in california alliteration till next time